Australia has been confirmed as the shark death capital of the world. According to new statistics, a quarter of fatalities from sharks were here in Australia last year. Now, the research also showed shark attacks in general are on the rise. There were 75 worldwide in 2011, twice as many as the year before. So with more, I'm joined now by Michael Brown from Surfwatch Australia. Good morning to you. Good Thanks morning, for coming in. Um, so three deaths from 11 shark attacks here in yeah. Australia last year. Why are we the highest? Well, I think there's a lot of hype the surrounding shark attacks, and I think it's it's one of those primeval fears that, that really sort of gets everyone's blood boiling. But I think the reality is that the, um, the sharks, there's not a lot more sharks out there, but there are certainly sharks that are coming in closer to shore at the moment. We're seeing huge increases in the numbers of bait fish. Where there are bait fish, the sharks are obviously coming in to feed. And even though there may be many sharks moving up and down the coast, which swim right past swimmers all the time and don't bother them, when the sharks are actually coming in to feed, that's when people come unstuck. So, I mean, if you go and swim your family out into the middle of, of a school of, of bait fish where there are sharks feeding, I think that's where the problems start to occur. Yeah. Just as you wouldn't take your family out, I guess, into a pride of lions if they're hungry. What well, do you do? I mean, how, is there anything we can ever do to lower the numbers? Three is obviously too many, and we never want to lose a single life. But is yeah. it realistic to lower them, or is this just a, a, something that we face? Okay. Well, look, I think we we try to do quite a few different things to, to minimise the, the risk of being attacked on the beach. But at the end of the day, if there are bait fish on the beach, that means that the risk of shark attack is going to increase. So what we really need to do, I mean, all these, these shark nets that are killing dolphins and other animals, I mean, it's a ridiculous system. If we had a system in place that monitored the actual movements and locations of these bait fish, those reports were made available to lifesavers on the beach. So they knew that, that say, come 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there were going to be 100,000 bait fish in and around the flagged area. Then they could put on extra patrols, stay more vigilant. So at the end of the day, knowing where the bait fish are is probably the single best and easiest way of, of protecting swimmers. You mentioned that last year to us. That's right. And you were going to put the application forward. Has anything come of it? Has anyone listened? I mean, it makes sense to someone like me who knows nothing about sharks and how they work but mm -hmm. is it going anywhere? Well, I think with, with anything to do with politics and the government, it's a, it's a very slow road. I mean, the shark nets have been in place for, what, 75-odd years now. The reality is that in the 10 years, and I mentioned this before, in the 10 years after the shark nets went in, there were more than twice as many attacks on New South Wales beaches as there was in the 10 years before. Mm -hmm. And in that meantime, I mean, we've killed hundreds of dolphins, seals, turtles. I could go on all day with the, the barbaric deaths. So the shark nets are, are very heavily entrenched in, in our psyche. But I think there are a lot of practical steps that we could take that would provide a, a much greater level of protection to swimmers, like monitoring the bait fish, knowing where the sharks are feeding, uh, rather than relying on a system that, um, you know, look, at the end of the day is, is responsible for, for thousands of innocent deaths. Keep us informed on how you go with all of that. I will. What happens. Thanks for coming in, Michael. Pleasure.